alive. Just gonna double check that everything is good to go here. Just making sure that we are in fact going. Cool. Yep. All right. We're here. Perfect. Okay. So after after some wrangling, we have ready for our last Timmy Tem action of the day. We've got Jay Doragon going up against Sukli. Now let's get right into the action here. So these are both uh, tamers that I've seen prior before in this tournament, uh, prior before in action. JD rocking the Luma Noxalotl with the Toxic Core team, and Zukli with the mid-range lineup, taking advantage of Kinu and Mimit. So one draft advantage that Zukli is going to have here is that because they have a Volaren, that baits out that first pick, or sorry, that first ban from JD. So the general game plan from Sukli gets to flow a little bit more freely because Volarend is a, is a must ban Tim for JD. So uh, J Dorganon uh, has the Doroboros open. Sukli counters with Golzi plus Kinu. Very similar lead to Kinu plus Yowler, only with more weaknesses, but Electric Typing does do pretty well into the side of JD. And he's going to go ahead and pick a Volfi to counteract that. So, Golzi definitely going to start feeling the pressure, especially on turn two. Both of these Tems can hit it for effective damage. Golzi can also hit them for effective damage, so... The, uh, the decisions will have to be made on turn one as to what happens with this Golzi. Second phase here, JD with the ban onto Mashuk. And the draft progressing quickly here. Volfi, the other 10 banned out. Sukli opting to go with Mimit and Yowler to increase that bulk presence. Also leverage that Kino a little bit more. And uh, J Dragonon. Uh, going with Tolkien, Ukama, and Noxalotl in the back line. Quickly having uh, one pick themselves to make. And it will be a Tolkien as well, so let's get it on. It's game number one. Sukli versus Jador Oregon. And uh, this uh, best of two, the Tem Team Cup May Edition. So we will see Golzi getting that Protector buff, hoping it's uh, otherwise fairly mediocre bulk. Take some punishment. But punishment it will take with the Tims that it's up against right here. Wolfie's got this turn 2 Dust Vortex that can do a ton of damage. And Adora Boros right from turn 1 is on access to Energy Manipulation and Beta Burst to really put the hurt on Golzi. Whereas Golzi's electric type attacks, other than Sparking Bullet, not a lot to not a lot to account for. But uppercut could be an effective melee attack to go into the Volpi here. We shall see. JD going into their Reserve time here. Considering whether to stay in and apply the pressure to this Golzi or to swap out and get a maybe a better matchup. That knocks a lot. Always tempting to get set up early on in the game. Hello to those who are just kind of sidling in here in chat. We have a uh, Last match of this week's edition of the Tim Team Cup. Things getting underway just now, and it will be Plague. 
And that's going to try and trap Golzi in. Let's see if it's successful. And we'll do so. Golzi retaliating with a sparking bullet that's going to deal just over 50% to Adora Boros, but not enough to really uh, KO here. Kinu with the beta burst. That'll supplement that damage. Not bad. But Adoro with the beta flying onto Golzi. Strong damage. Golzi hanging on, but just barely. And there doesn't seem to be any way that this Golzi manages to survive. Another plague, let alone a dust vortex. And Dukui's going to have to make a decision here. JD with the swap out. Ukama coming in. Flag connecting onto Golzi, and down it goes. Sukli following up with the Hypnosis. Onto Volfi. Giving him a turn to set up. But already down a Tem. This early on. And it will be Mimic. Mimit's going to take over that Volfi. So Ukama definitely threatened by the plague here. And Volfi on Volfi action. With a Kinu beside it. And we've seen this combo, haven't we? Ukama leaves. In comes Tolkien. Heater going off. It's going to apply burn to both these Thames. And Noxolotl coming in for Volfi, so a double swap from JD, opting to reposition themselves on the board. Dukli throwing a beta burst and a plague into that slot where Ukama was. Interesting that rather than swapping in and out to create more value from buffs, the Kinu has stayed in and attacked for three turns now. Now the Luma Noxolotl is in play. J. Dora Gigion has an opportunity to buff it up here. Dust Vortex from the Mimited Volpi. Big damage. Toxic Ink applying the Toxic Ticks. That's going to eat away at that Mimit. And Kinu rests. Zugli opting to keep the Kinu in play. This is a Protector Kinu. But Zookli erring on the side of caution with it uh, in terms of swapping out. Putting it in play here. There's the token again going for the Tornado, trying to pick up another KO. The Mimit stands strong. Beta Burst into the token. That's an overexertion on the Kinu, and Sandstorm from the Vulpi means that Tolkien will go down. But Acid Reflex coming up in return. This is going to land almost entirely onto the Kinu. Well, entirely onto the Kinu, not almost, but... Vulpi going down to a Toxic Tick means that Mimit is out of commission. Kinu still able to swap around, even with the Toxic Tick. That's only a total of 22.5% damage. Atsukli feeling a little bit likely on the back foot here. Doroboros is weakened. And Yowler with a chamomile does represent a pretty powerful threat. Ukama is able to check the token in the back here, so I have to see what Sukli decides they want to do with the Yowler Akinu here. Is gonna be a fast water cannon. Synergy into the Yowler. Not a lot of damage. Toxic Ink targeting the Kinu, and, and the Kinu goes down. It's actually slower than both of those Thames. Yowler retaliating with the Clinch. That's going to deal some big damage into a combo. Not quite enough. Off the knockout, Tolkien applies Heater. That might be enough to save it. I'm going down on the very first turn it comes in, but... Yowler now with a big task ahead of it. It's got to be able to stand up to a lot of JD's remaining tens here. Aquatic Whirlwind, just not quite enough. 
Pokin hanging on by the skin of its teeth, and that's some big damage. Into the Noxolotl, driving it to overexertion and low HP. Yowler going for the Savage Suplex. Will it be enough? No, not quite. As without the show off, Yowler's damage just not quite there. Yukama likely cannot attack now for fear of awexing itself to death. With an overexerted um, Tem as well on GD side. It's a four on one, but if there's any Tem that can get this done, you best believe it's Yowler. Out comes Noxolotl. In comes Adoroboros. Kama going for the cooperation play. This is going to heal up both Tems as well as restore stamina. Yowler opting for hibernate here. Restoring that stamina so it can keep fighting. But it's got a tough task ahead of it. Savage Suplex needing to deal 40% damage roughly to this Adora Boros. And if it doesn't, it's unlikely that Yowler is going to be able to keep it going. Beta Burst coming in. That's big damage, about 39%. Yowler countering with Savage Suplex. And it's just not quite enough again. J. Dora Gone survives. His Tims, all of them skirting with red HP, and Zookly decides that's enough. Game one to J. Diora Gone. Fast and furious action there in game number one. Uh, interesting uh, use of Kinu in that game. We saw Kinu actually staying in and applying pressure with Beta Burst rather than swapping out, but even though the battle looked well in JD's hand for much of the game, Yowler coming close to bringing it back at the end. Let's go. Game number two. Between the two tamers. Let's see if the draft goes any differently. And what sort of excitement we might see. Oh, we're, uh, looks like we might be waiting on an official here. Uh, confirming something real quick. Figuring out, I think we're looking into the contents of the teams. Or we're waiting on something else here. Nope, we're good to go. So it's game two. Let's get it gone. Get it get it on? Get it gone? I don't know. I'm old. Leave me alone. Alright. Sukli and J Doregon into game number two. So JD securing at least one point. They're playing for three now. If they win, they will receive three points from the series. Sukli playing to even it up at one one apiece. Mix banned out first this time. JD going for that ban, targeting the Molarend once again. So last time it was Kinu and Golzi. None, those weren't quite enough to beat. In particular, the Volfi gave the Golzi huge problems early on. Because the Yowler is Chamomile, that means that it's not likely coming in this lead. And it will be Golzi. Posted up besides the Kinu. Wolfie and Adora Boros banned out from the second phase, which means that AD is without their mentals in the second half of this draft, and Yowler hits the board almost immediately. Ukama and Noxolotl accompanying Tolkien. We'll see if Sukli simply decides to go for the same options here out of the draft. 
No, they'll go for the Calibus instead of Mimit. So, the big, bulky squid. We're going to soak up some of the punishment that it's been being dealt out by J. Doragon's team. Here we go. J. Doragon and Supli game two. one nothing series lead for J. Darude Sandstormagon. And seeing if they can close out the series here. So in game number one, Sukli really opted to keep this Kinu in and try to apply pressure using Beta Burst. But the plagues from Volfi just everything just a little bit too fast for the Kinu. So let's see if a more switch heavy approach is taken here. As JD swapping in the Noxalotl turn one. Not wasting any time. Going for the play to lock in the Golzi with the Plague. This will, however, strip away the burn, so this Golzi is going to hit very hard right off the bat. It'll be a beta burst. Wolfie being targeted. Uppercut this time alongside the beta burst. Wow, the Wolfie is definitely feeling it after that one. Uh, big damage coming through, and unlike last game, Wolfie not nearly as much damage onto the Golzi turn one. This exchange actually pretty heavily favoring Zookly. They go for the Plague again. Right. Now the Revit coming through from Kinu. That's going to land. Charge Iron Filings, but that's going to miss the Volfi in AoE attack. The typing lost from Potato. And they will strike back with a Toxic Ink. Untrapping the Golzi, but... Golzi, without Charged Iron Filings, sorry, using Charged Iron Filings there, failing to pick up the KO on the Volfi, but that may not ultimately matter. We'll have to see. The Golzi untrapping itself with the Toxic Ticks does get out. Yowler comes in. Chamomile active. J. Dragon going for the bush play. Inu with Hypnosis, that's going to target the Noxolotl, which will go for a sleep. So Yowler getting in fairly free here. Already we can see the, the Swap Arena game having a much more profound positive effect for Sukli. They're able to keep their Golzi alive. And with the special defense boost, it's not that worse for wear. And Yowler comes in with Chamomile active and Akinu next to it. I have to think that it's at least somewhat tempting for Zukli to swap that Kinu out here. Here comes Zukama. Savage Suplex coming in from Yowler. Big damage to Zukama on the switch. And no, once again, the Kinu just decides to rest. It stays in. Facing down the Acid Reflux now, and the Water Cannon as well, from Mukama. Um, Jade Dragonon. Finally, the Kinu does leave. In comes Calibus, figuring this is a favorable aboard as any. Mukama leaving as well. Tolkien taking its place, so favorable aboard state regained for... JD. Acid Reflux is going to spread some Toxic Ticks here. Unfortunately, no, it won't. As Chamomile and the Toxic Typing blocking those Ticks from Acid Reflux. Oshidashi, Yowler just spreading more and more damage. Yowler very likely going for a Hibernate play here. With its last turn of Immunity intact from Chamomile. As Calibus finds itself in a Somewhat precarious position here. Staring down a tornado from Tolkien. Not having the best resistances to such things. But it could have its own water type attacks active this turn. Ice Stalactite or Aqua Stone. Let's see. AD actually opting for the switch themselves. They will get 5 head the Mashuk in. Which offers a much better defensive matchup. And a Tolkien coming in, this time on the side of Sukli. The burns are spread. 
Softening the damage from Narcoleptic hit onto Yowler. Yowler opting for a Savage Suplex. And thanks to... Let's see. Yes, thanks to Parrier from Five Head the Mashuk, there's almost no way that Yowler can break through that. Although, if there was a, a better board for a token to be in on, I'm not sure I've seen one. And, uh... It has a couple different options of where to go with its wind moves, and Tornado, off hold, it can really dish out some damage here, while Yowler is forced to recover. Tolkien returning to the match. It is going to replace the Mashuk. Yowler is out, and Kinu will come in for it. A Tolkien getting buffed up. Not the easiest task in the world for JD to bring it down. The Tornado, however, does go into the token slot, so fairly well resisted. And Toxic Ink is going to stack up some pure damage ticks onto the token despite the increased defenses from the Kinu. Oh, I see in chat uh, Gaijin Boo raiding with a party of 55. Hello, Gaijin and friends. Hope your stream all went well. And thank you all for tuning in to the official Tim Team Cup May edition. We got a $225 prize pool with 310,000 Pansons on the line in this tournament. Not in this particular match, but in the event overall. We're currently watching um, Jay Darugon against Supli in the last match of the week. Windburst striking onto the Tolkien, likely predicting some sort of switch. As Hypnosis from Kinu will and gum up the works for this Noxolotl, which has spent quite a bit of time in non-trance sleep. Not exactly the best place to be. Token looking relatively healthy with this Kinu buff. Means that Sukli's got a pretty fearsome way to deal a lot of damage into Sukli's team. Or sorry, to JD's team, but that Ukama still kind of lurking in the back. Tolkien goes for the peck, waking up the Noxolotl. That's some tech right there. Windburst, just not enough to take out the Tolkien. Acid Reflux will be the response from Noxolotl. Just enough to bring down Kinu and also put two ticks onto that Tolkien. The OX, well worth it. As we look and we see here the when the token is brought low finally it does present a pretty good opportunity for Musukli's Thames here. Yala returning to the match, Chamomile fully reapplied. We can see currently a 5-4 lead in Thames for J Doragon, however. These Thames not looking like they want to be taking Savage Suplexes and Oshidashis anytime soon. The exception of Five Head the Mashuk, who lurks in the back. Only contested by this Tolkien, but even with the Toxic Tick, Tolkien relatively healthy. Relatively low tempo turn here for JD, however, the Noxlottle did overexert. Tolkien does leave the battle. It's going to be Golzi coming in. So this Tolkien will get one last hurrah after using Peck. Bulfi coming in. Golzi coming in to meet it. It will be a fire tornado. This is going to strike into the Golzi slot. Will it survive? No. Golzi going down. Yowler using a minimal effort clinch. Conserving stamina to take out the token. And so that leaves us with a 3 versus 4. Yowler still looking relatively healthy, though. No Kinu buffs on it, but a chamomile and a world of opportunity. So this is a show offless Yowler, actually. Clinch and Hibernate, along with Savage Suplex and Oshidashi. So a no setup Yowler as. 
Uh, JD is going to have to reckon with this Tolkien now. These two temps side by side representing a pretty significant threat. As Mushuk is not going to be the biggest fan of taking Tolkien's wind attacks. And any of the switch-ins that JD has will not want to be met with Savage Suplex. And Volpi also vulnerable to Oshidashi. So Dukli does have the positioning to potentially take this game home here. Tornado will strike into the Mashuk. Is it enough? Yes, just barely enough. The Mashuk going down to the Tornado. Tolkien, mission accomplished. Taking out the biggest remaining threat for Yaller. Yaller, Oshidashi connects onto Volfi, and just like that, Sukli gets huge value out of their turns, and they've taken the lead two Thames to three in their favor. J. Dragon preparing their last stand of the match. We've got Ukama and Noxalotl now. Tolkien is trapped in to take Aquatic Whirlwind. We know from last match that it took a Savage Suplex at 60% HP. But it won't be able to take one at 49.8%. Anark hit doing some strong damage. Now they're opting for Hibernate here, rather than using... Going going for the self-heal, rather than opting to finish off the Ukama, Calibus comes in. So if this Ukama we know has cooperation, does it have access to Blizzard? If not, this could be a huge value play for Sukli, taking advantage of some of the more unorthodox moveset choices on JD's side here. We know this Ukama has revealed cooperation as one of its moves. So it's unlikely that it's running Blizzard. There is the water cannon, so... Opting to just put big damage into that Yowler. It is immune to the poison, however. The Toxic Ink return onto Ukama. It is going to be enough. As Yowler and the Noxalotl rest, and we've got a 2v1 situation here. As another interesting tech choice presents itself, does Zukli run Humiliating Slap on their Calibus? If so, this is almost a guaranteed victory as H Slap will slowly wear down these Thames. Acid Reflux is going to do minor damage, but it does put two Toxic Ticks onto the Yowler. That makes it very unlikely to be able to survive an upcoming Narco hit. It responds with Savage Suplex, and that's some pretty big damage, but that damage is enough to put JD into trance. Strangle forcing it to rest. So it's not likely going to be able to leverage that trance. As Yowler does go for Hibernate. An interesting choice is... Even with the matcha, or no, this is chamomile, so it will have to sit there for the two turns. As the regeneration from AD side means that this Yowler is actually not going to get to take another move here. Oh. Both times rest. Resting all around. The Toxic ticks add up. Yowler is so low, it, it can't survive another Toxic Ink. And it's going to be Acid Reflux instead, actually. Doing a little bit more of that special attack damage into Calibus. And that Calibus is running Humiliating Slap, so that's going to slowly build up here. With out of regeneration ticks, it's looking a little bit rough for JD. They will be able to go second with narcoleptic hit to give them some pillow regen. But humiliating slap is going to slowly start to add up this minus defense here it, as the noxalotl rests. The third H slap. So, so, so slap it up. 
and the narcoleptic hit in reply. Pretty solid damage. Potato does go to sleep, but even with the heal from Pillow, unfortunately, looks like Sukli is going to just wait, get some stamina back onto that Calibus. And it's Acid Reflux. Is this going to be enough? Not likely. Paul falls pretty low. And they will go for the fourth. S -s -s Slap it up. Just not enough damage. Che Dorigon sitting on what must be one HP on their Noxalotl, but without a special attack. No way they can deal that much damage back to the Calibus. And let's see here. It does seem like a formality at this point. Yes, the Toxic Ink will go into the Calibus. Noxalotl deciding to go out on its own terms and 1-1 in the series. GG's to both players, Supli and J. Drudagon. Um, well done for both players. Uh, as we can see, that's going to bring us to the end of this week's festivities for the Tem Team Cup. Hope everyone enjoyed watching the games this week. GG to all the players. Thank you so much to everyone who cast throughout the week. Gaijin Boo, Quarter. Yenton, Jenton, sorry. Uh, Tylo, of course, for putting this whole thing on. Uh, Sheep of Ice. Uh, and Mr. Havoc for helping officiate. And all of you lovely people, of course, for watching. Uh, it's going to be the end of our festivities this week. But do check in next week where we have another series of games between all the players in these lovely groups as we battle for supremacy again. $225 and the 310,000 Pansons. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm going to uh, try to get see if we can get Tylo to uh, raid someone for us here. But for now, uh, my name is East, and I'm going to be logging off. See ya.